Welcome back to Steve's Vintage Mono Bills and another edition, part two, of Academania. So, um, uh, this is, as I said, this is the second part. Uh, I started out with the, the Hawker Tempest and said it would be a four part series, uh, but it's now a five part series. There's a special bonus. bonus uh, video at the end uh, which is something a little different and something I'm really excited about and expect will be a lot of fun so stay tuned for that um, I'm not I'm, I'm not dumping all these down at the same time uh, under one playlist they, they will be under the Academania playlist but otherwise um, uh, they're just gonna come out every couple days and uh, you know, people are going to be back to work. They're not going to have as much time on their hands. Um, although they may have trouble sleeping. My videos are great for that. Um, and so, um, yeah. Uh, so here we have part two. And it's the, of course, Academy 172 scale. Um, JU87G-1 Stuka. The Tank Buster. And um, as always with Academy, very nice box art. Um, they do a great job with it for whoever does it for them. Uh, they do look painted, although I can never seem to find uh, find a signature. Uh, as always with Academy, you get uh, nice Nice pictures on the side of the completed model. They always do a very good job with that. One more on this side. And you get the usual 14 and up, made in Korea. This one's copyright 2019. That's probably the box. Um, Inside on the instructions, it'll probably tell us uh, the actual uh, when the tooling and so forth was done. And contains one unassembled model kit, easy to follow pictorial instructions, uh, paint not included, not suitable for under 14. Although I think anybody between 10 and, 10 and 14 uh, would be able to handle this uh, with some experience and certainly with some skilled um, supervision or mentorship put it that way okay so it's um, Academy catalog number one two four five zero I got this through Amazon and uh, the external packaging was very appropriate. Uh, there's, uh, there's a little crease here, um, but otherwise everything's great. Uh, always top opening box, which is always nice. And uh, we've got a sprue of like it has uh, well it's got the clear plastic very nicely done the panel lines are very clear very crisp I'm not going to open this bag at this point and might need to have some trimming done there but I will we'll have to see once we get into it and uh, we've got a couple of other clear plastic details and I'm not sure it maybe you can have a, cat, a, a 
canopy open, canopy closed. I think that's what it is. Um, this looks like the full canopy with the aperture in the rear for the gun. And uh, likewise, open and closed here. <coughs> Excuse me. Okay, and so then uh, after the clear parts, we get uh, two, uh, two bags, looks like with two sprues each. For once, this wasn't on top, and that's their warning to check the parts list before you unseal. Otherwise, they won't be responsible for missing or broken parts. Uh, we'll look at the decals shortly. Got modeling tips and legal stuff in multiple languages. More modeling tips here. And uh, not in color, but there is a separate paint guide. And uh, the coloring is uh, lovely on the box, so, um, so that's nice. This one was uh, Hauptmann Hans Ulrich Rudel. And this one was, uh, there's no pilot name. Just says 1SG1. So, and I see here this is copyright 2002. It's the same on the instructions. Okay, uh, so we got uh, nice decals, um, nice looking decals. I, I, I'm, I'm assuming they're pretty much the same as, as the other Academy decals. Um, a little difficult to work with. Um, you want to make sure you slide them off as soon as they're ready to slide, because otherwise they. Uh, they, they curl up and, and you can't uncurl them. Uh, and so yeah, so we've got a, a nice nice variety here. And we also have a cockpit control detail, which is always nice. If you don't want to go to the trouble of painting it yourself. So yes, uh, the uh, the kit was newly tooled in 2002 by Academy, uh, and uh, since 2022 has been uh, issued under the Special Hobby uh, brand label. And in this case, uh, we haven't got any any history in the instructions. So uh, I'll run over a little bit of that because I know everyone would just be heartbroken if I didn't uh, toss some history in there. Um, you know, one of the uh, one of the most familiar and our iconic aircraft of the uh, of the Second World War, uh, one of the most feared, and um, uh, as a dive bomber, it, it uh, first saw service in 1937. Uh, with the Luftwaffe's Condor region during the Spanish Civil War and for the the entire length of the uh, the Second World War 1939 to 1945 uh, gull wings and spatted undercarriage these are spats in case anybody wondered what they were uh, partially cover the wheels that's what they're called uh, spats are also worn on on shoes um, so yes, I mean, uh, initially, uh, it played a huge role in the, uh, in the, in the Blitzkrieg lightning war, uh, victories, um, where, you know, the Germans recognized early on that, you know, just tanks on the ground weren't necessarily going to do it. And, uh, these aircraft were able to, 
to get in really fast, uh, dive bomb uh, strategic targets, and it made it made it much easier for the uh, the infantry and, and motorized divisions to uh, to move forward quickly. Uh, this perfect uh, this is the uh, the G version, uh, which came about uh, right near the end of the war, and um, it was exclusively used as a tank buster on the Eastern Front. And so uh, after, you know, when they started losing in 1943, uh, and, you know, the Russians were, you know, they turned around and the Russians were marching steadily after that, uh, they realized that they, they needed a tank buster. And the Henschels they'd been using, uh, they were very effective, but they had very large underwing fuel tanks. Uh, so they were very susceptible to small arms fire. So um, uh, they were equipped with a siren that um, uh, when they were diving, uh, let out a very, uh, very loud uh, screech. Uh, and, uh, you know, you, you hear it in plenty of movies. So the main difference with the G was that... Um, Uh, it was equipped with uh, two 37 millimeter cannons. So uh, that's these big suckers here, two of them. Um, Stukas uh, previously had been uh, outfitted with uh, um, 20 millimeter cannons. Um, but uh, as these were developed specifically as tank busters, um, and they were very effective as tank busters, um, they put the 37 millimeter cannons. And uh, for those who, um, well, lots of people might know, but lots of people might not know, what's the difference between a machine gun and a cannon? Well, a machine gun shoots bullets, regular bullets, uh, at least back in, in the Second World War it did. And, but the cannons uh, ex uh, fired explosive shells shells so uh, that's the main difference um, cannons were uh, obviously a lot more deadly a lot more effective but the uh, the ammunition was also difficult to manufacture and correct me if I'm wrong um, but they weren't able to uh, carry as many rounds as um, as regular uh, machine gun bullets. So I guess, you know, it, it came down to, you know, whatever was the purpose, you know. And, uh, but yeah, um, after the initial success of the Spitfire, uh, they started getting hit pretty hard. And it wasn't until they adopted the 20 millimeter cannons that, um, that they really uh, started to dominate. <coughs> Excuse me. Okay, so uh, let's get in and uh, take a look at the parts here. Uh, we've got uh, one, two, actually it looks like there's three in here. Three screws. Surprised at how loud my hobby knife is these from now on. Cut down on the irritation factor. Okay, so here we go. All right, so here's a uh, here's the here's the cannons molded here uh, all in one piece nicely detailed here's the the other side here uh, these look like cradles for holding whatever and flaps uh, then we've got the fuselage the propeller exhausts spinner and 
Yeah, this is uh, this is you know pretty much like the the Tempest as far as details concerned. It's just okay. Um, might have to go straight on with the paint for this because um, primer would cover up uh, the rivet and panel lines. So that's sprue C and sprue A. And then here we have the, uh, the cockpit tub. Again, no figures. A, a fairly detailed raised uh, cockpit control panel. Nose of the, of the aircraft, pilot seat. Air intake. Academy does a good job of packing their sprues together. If only Steve could do as good a job repacking them. Okay, so uh, that goes down there. Actually, yeah, we saw the decaling for that, uh, for the control panel. So that's nice. That's probably why it's raised instead of recessed on the dials. Um, okay, uh, so yeah, so we've got the spats here. We've got the wings. guess from the illustrations it was fixed down landing gear um, uh, this this wasn't built for speed and actually uh, um, if you look here you can see the aerodynamic lines that have been molded in here so this was actually all about drag and um, uh, stability of the aircraft uh, when it was in a steep dive Okay, and again, uh, just just kind of okay uh, panel lines. Uh, this is going to be a candidate for thinned out paint with a brush, I think, or maybe the airbrush. And then we have the uh, the lower wings. You can see they, uh, you know, there is a decent amount of detail. It's just not really pronounced. And uh, then we got the wheels and the tail wheel, and it looks like a couple more brackets, uh, some uh, air intake vents, yeah. Okay, so uh, let's take a look here, and slightly different instructions here. Uh, we get the The artist's rendition, we get a, a picture of the completed and decorated model. Uh, note here, take care not to injure yourself while using the modeling tools to cut or trim parts. That's wise advice. There you go. I know we've all done it, but you know, you, you want to try not to do that. Uh, glue, cut, don't glue. Uh, optional parts, uh, multiple, da da da. Pretty standard uh, symbolic glossary there. <coughs> okay, two sided, four fold out pages. Again, no figures, which is disappointing. Um, so, yeah, so we've got the cockpit tub here. Pretty basic, pretty simple stuff. Uh, there's uh, the inside, and they give you the they give you the paint code. Uh, Ten would be black gray. I believe that's what they used in the Luftwaffe. 
interiors as opposed to the British cockpit green. And uh, yeah, so then the fuselage pieces go together. It's pretty standard stuff. And then uh, the nose, exhaust, spinner, propeller. Um, da 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 da. And yeah, there's no internal engine. So that just pops on there. So that'll be simple. Uh, and then you've got this this cover here and uh, I guess this is a signal there's a clear piece that goes in here at the back shows you the points to glue on the wings uh, horizontal stabilizers at the rear how to attach where to glue Looks like there might be some optional pieces. Uh, then we got the landing gear, gear with the with the spats spats and the tail wheel. These are air intakes, some sort of antenna or sensor, uh, rear stabilizers. Uh, then you've got all the little doodaddy things. I noticed this with the um, uh, no, ignore that. So yeah, all the little doodaddy things here, and then uh, last goes on the cannons, and it shows you a face-on view, uh, so you know how where they're supposed to go and how they're supposed to sit. Like these have little winglets or stabilizers probably to keep them from getting ripped off uh, under the stresses uh, then they show and yeah so you have the option here open or closed and uh, lastly is the the sprue map So again, uh, you know, we're, we're seeing the trend here with Academy, uh, you know, a decent little kit, um, uh, not the greatest detail, but uh, sufficient, and uh, what seems to be one of their strong points here, this kit was uh, $18.97 uh, Canadian and included Amazon uh, Prime shipping. So under $20, hard to go wrong, uh, even if you just uh, uh, bang it together on a, a rainy Saturday afternoon, set it aside and paint her up on Sunday. Um, still, you have plenty of enjoyment out of that, and I think it'll look pretty good once it's all, all decorated up. Because that's what you want in the end. For me, anyways, that you know, you achieved what you wanted to achieve, and uh, that you're happy with it. And just as important, you know, when you put it on the shelf, looks great, looks pretty, and uh, something you can be proud of, even if it's a small thing. Okay. So uh, the shipping material was appropriate. There is that crease in the box, so I'll have to take off a quarter point for that. Otherwise, the packaging was fine. Uh, sprues are perfect. Uh, parts are fine. I'm going to give it 2.75, though, uh, because, you know, the detail could be better. Um, excuse me. Again. For $19, you know, we'll make that up in the value category.
Okay, and so, um, and uh, the instructions. Um, I'm going to have to take a quarter point off because there, were, there was no history or service uh, service notes. Um, but everything else was great, and it was nice of them to include that separate sheet uh, with the two, two different uh, uh, paint and decal uh, schemes. So um, even though it wasn't in color on the box, they provide uh, lovely, flawless, perfect um, paint schemes. So a uh, quarter point for that, which brings it back up to three. And uh, half a point for value. So that brings us to an even 10. And um, I put up the card uh, if you want more information on how I how I rate a kit. Uh, you, you know, if you've watched a few of these, then, uh, you know, you pretty much know. Uh, as well as, you know, I, I try to give a very brief uh, overview of how I do it. And uh, it makes a lot of sense to me, and I've had compliments from others. Uh, uh, it's fair, logical, and uh, provides for, you know, the... Not just plucking numbers out of the air. <laughs> okay, so uh, that's it for today's video. And uh, we'll be back for part three. Um, as I said, uh, we're not going to drop these all at once on a single playlist for somebody to binge. Uh, we'll put them out every couple days. And uh, uh, hope to, you know, kind of relieve some of the boredom and getting back to the tedium of... of uh, regular life after the holidays. So all the best to everyone. Uh, as always, a shout out to Terry. Uh, hope you enjoy the videos and we're all looking forward to when you can get down to the hobby room and uh, we can uh, we can we can chat and and uh, what do you call it? Uh, chew the fat as it were. Yeah. Okay, so uh, thanks again to all my subscribers, uh, to everyone who stops by to view. Uh, glad that, to know that uh, uh, people people find what I'm doing interesting and and informative. I hope and uh, so yeah. I hope everybody enjoys it. Always trying to improve. As I said, my uh, my two main goals uh, uh, early early 2024 goals are to learn how to use the uh, airbrush and learn how to use OBS Studio so I can uh, make uh, my videos a better experience for everybody. Okay, and also with 2024, there'll be uh, lots of builds coming. Lots of builds coming. And uh, some are already underway that uh, I'll be giving updates on. But as I said, uh, lots of stuff coming down the pipe uh, as far as builds are concerned. And after I learn how to use the OSP Studio, uh, then, you know, I can do start to finish builds uh, that aren't in real time. All right, so thanks again, and I uh, hope everybody stays safe and healthy, and uh, look forward to, to next time you stop in at the, at the Vintage Model Channel. Bye now.